So a little while ago, I did a video on what the media had labeled the Don't Say Gay Bill, and I talked during that video about the account Lips of TikTok and how essentially they were a big driver behind this change in the Republican view of education. I also mentioned in that video how this account was flying too close to the sun, and eventually the left was going to go after them. And last week, that day had come, a Washington Post so-called journalist unmasked the account publicly and the left celebrated they were in jubilation and of course they had to go on with the smears and talk about how this account deserved to be unmasked because reasons and blah 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 and also they're evil racist homophobe bigot bad people blah 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 now here's the thing a lot of people in right-wing media would tell you that there's no actual reason to unmask this account there is nothing to be gained in the public domain by knowing who the person behind this account account actually is. But in reality, that's actually not the case. And you could make an argument from a journalistic standpoint, from a make information public standpoint for revealing the identity behind such an influential account. However, we all know the reason why this account was unmasked. If this were reversed and this were a lefty account, none of these people would support unmasking this account. The reason why Lives of TikTok is actually being unmasked in this way is because the left wants to intimidate the person behind the account. That is their goal. They have the wrong political views, so any arguments about integrity or putting information out into the public are just nonsensical. They're lies. They're all about intimidating this person out of the public square because she is, in fact, effective. And chief among those arguments is this video we're going to go over today from the Young Turks. In fact, we're going to do more than a few videos from the Young Turks about this because they're completely unhinged. But today's video is going to be about this video. We'll get into the other one in another time. We'll just, just, just wait. First, I'm happy to announce that this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is celebrating its third anniversary as one of the top RPG games out there on the market. But this game started strong and never stopped building up steam. Just check out some of the amazing additions that Raid has added over the course of the last few years. There's the Doom Tower, which has over 120 levels, introduced a whole world of new and terrifying bosses to slay. As a high-level collection RPG, Raid started with hundreds of unique characters and bosses, but that didn't stop them from adding more and more new champions. Last year, Raid added a whole new faction. The Shadowkin. The Shadowkin are a tribe of warriors from the Far East, recently liberated from the reign of evil. And of course, no raid review can end without addressing the newest and biggest addition to raid. I'm talking about the Hydra Clan boss. This monster has multiple heads, each with a different ability, and that means it requires a different strategy for you to destroy them. Because Raid is celebrating a three-year anniversary, they have an insane amount of things in store for you, including free gifts for everyone, a bunch of new content and events, new champions, new artifact sets, and a fully personalized video showcasing every player's Raid journey and their own personal achievements. This is the absolute best time to get started if you aren't playing Raid already. Go to my link in the description or skip scan the QR code on your screen and join the party. And if you sign up now, you have amazing bonuses to look forward to. You'll get a huge birthday package special worth $40. This includes three champions, Misery Cord, Tiger Soul, Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit XP Brews. All this treasure is waiting here for you, but you have to get on this quick because these perks are only available for the next 30 days. On top of that, the celebration extends to new and existing players once you're in the game if you use promo code three years raid once you're in the game you will get an extra $25 worth of value just enter code three years raid and get your hands on all of this amazing loot Washington Post reporter Taylor Lorenz has uh done such an effective job at her journalism that she has uh, allowed for these conservatives to have a meltdown meltdown simultaneously and I'm here for it so she reported on the person behind the account known as Libs of TikTok. 
So the first thing that needs to be cleared up and understood by everybody on the internet.com is that Anna Kasparian is a total buffoon. But we already knew that, so let's get on to the second thing. And that is this idea that Taylor Lorenz did such an amazing journalism in this situation that she should be commended. From all I can find out, from all I can discover, there's a random guy on the internet who essentially did 99% of the work in unmasking the person behind lives of TikTok by looking back at the archive of the Twitter account and Taylor Lorenz is just taking the credit for that. So even in this regard, in this opening salvo, Anna Kasparian is just lying. Taylor Lorenz basically copy and pasted somebody else's work, added in a bunch of, oh no, save the gay stuff in it. And now everybody's reporting it and giving her the credit because it showed up in a paper. But in reality, internet detectives unmasked lives of TikTok. All Taylor Lorenz did was show up to this woman's house and harass her family and link in a very public paper that got a bunch of news attention information that would lead you to be able to find her address her previous employer and the location of her family members and by the way taylor Renz is the same person who cries about how she's been harassed you feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy your life and it's so isolating and terrifying it's horrifying I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's overwhelming. It's really hard. Even though she's basically directing that same level of harassment towards this person because she disagrees with her political views. It's an account that wasn't really on my radar. It's an account that wasn't really on my radar. I just want to pause here to point out how absurd what Anna Kasparian just said was. She just said that Libs of TikTok was not on her radar. It's an account that Anna Kasparian, who works in news media, specifically the online news media, wasn't really paying attention to before this. That's absurd in every possible way. Anna, what are you doing with your life? You're in this space. You should know what Libs of TikTok is before Taylor Lorenz told you. But it turns out that this person uh, specifically tweets out or posts about various individuals uh, and frames them as groomers and pedophiles because they happen to be part of the LGBTQ community. Now, it's one thing to repost what someone is saying in a video. It's an entirely different thing to intentionally defame them and frame them as groomers and pedophiles. So here we have the dedicated lie from Anna Kasparian. In this video and in the other video that I'm going to cover related to this, Anna Kasparian is pushing this notion that Libs of TikTok isn't just reposting videos from the Libs of TikTok, specifically about teachers, which seems to be something that this woman is interested in reposting, but she's also doing something deceptive in the way that she's doing it, and she's saying that all these gays is groomers and pedophiles. Here's the thing. That's just not the case. You can go to the Libs of TikTok account yourself and look at what the posts from this account actually are. They are all just reposts of videos from TikTok or other social media things where the teachers themselves, in their own words, frame themselves as sketchy things. Now, you could say Libs of TikTok is an aggregator with a mission and the person behind the account is looking for these videos specifically, but to pretend that she's doing something deceptive when she's not, she's just reporting on something that she finds interesting, is an absolute lie, and it's going to be undercut when Anna Kasparian starts reading from the article. And yes, what I'm saying is that Anna Kasparian is going to be worse than Taylor Lorenz in this video. And so this person was doing these posts anonymously and uh, Taylor Lorenz figured out who it was. Now, before we get to the right wing meltdown on this story, I think it's really important to do what I think a lot of people are, are failing to do today. Focus on the story itself and the details in the reporting, which make it abundantly clear that what she did here in her reporting and by revealing who this person is, in my opinion, she did nothing wrong. Now, again, you can make the case that when there's a certain level of interest in what you're doing and you're remaining anonymous yourself, that it is interesting and it is within the public interest to reveal the person behind this, especially when you're somebody like Lives of TikTok that has had such a great impact on the political world, specifically for the right and in a bunch of local elections. There's entire packs that are finally running on education, which is something that I used to talk about years ago when I did that series for the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Liz of TikTok has blown any of that out of the water with the way that they just post 
what's going on in the schools from the teacher's own mouths. But of course, Anna's going to say that she didn't do anything wrong because Libs of TikTok is on the right wing. I need to emphasize that while you can make a principal case for unmasking this person, this is not what's going on. And obviously, this person is being unmasked for purely partisan reasons and for harassment based reasons. So the title of the piece is Meet the Woman Behind Libs of TikTok Secretly Fueling the Rights Outrage Machine. A popular Twitter account has morphed into a social media phenomenon spreading anti-LGBTQ plus sentiment and, sh uh, and shaping public discourse. Now, this isn't some random account that has absolutely no power. As Lorenz reports, this account has become incredibly influential in right-wing media, and it's been influential in force, not influential in essentially persuading right-wing lawmakers in red states to draft and pass legislation based on these posts. Yes, Anna, we know that the account is being effective. That's why the left is targeting the person behind the account because it's effective. Thank you for explaining that. So Libs of TikTok reposts a steady stream of TikTok videos and social media posts primarily from LGBTQ plus People. So remember what Anna Kasparian said earlier in the video about how this account just isn't reposting videos of left-wing educators that happen to fall within something that this person is interested in. She's making up content and defaming people, blah, 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 blah. Well, even Taylor Lorenz's own piece acknowledges that she posts a steady stream of these videos. A lot of them are from the gays that are teachers, but they are publicly posted things and lives of TikTok acts as an aggregator and this is causing the outrage. Now, you could say that the whole point of the account is to post from teachers, from lefties, and thus that is the framing of the issue. But Anna is denying that this is happening while simultaneously reading an article that is describing exactly what's happening. So credit to Taylor Lorenz in this regard for this paragraph. It's obviously imbued with her opinion, but in reality, even there's some standards at the Washington Post, apparently, she has to admit that, yeah, she's reposting the things. Often, including incendiary framing designed to generate outrage. This is graphic too. Videos shared from the account quickly find their way to the most influential names in right-wing media. The account has emerged as a powerful force on the internet, shaping right-wing media, impacting anti-LGBTQ legislation, and influencing millions by posting viral videos aimed at inciting outrage among the right. Inciting outrage. I love the way that Anna reads things sometimes. I know this is a little tangent, but the way she goes, inciting outrage. Yeah, you're trying to gin up some reaction so people can make changes in terms of policy. This is what everybody does in the media when they're trying to get change. This is what activists do. So yeah, she posts things that go on in the schools to get you, the parents out there who don't know what's going on in the schools and legislatures out there who don't know what's going on in the schools to change what's going on in the schools. And by the way, that's what they're talking about when they say anti-LGBTQ plus double XIP legislation. It's not actually anti-gays legislation. It's legislation preventing the politics around the LGBTQ double XIIPJ community from being taught to your kids in the school. Libs of TikTok, by the way, also posts videos about all the racist nonsense that the left is pushing in the schools. That's what the left is angry about. Make no mistake about it. Now, the account has been promoted by prominent figures, including uh, Joe Rogan, Meghan McCain, and Glenn Greenwald, oh, who uh, apparently uh, wanted to take some ownership of the account at one point. The online influencer, by the way, Glenn Greenwald, not happy about that label. So of course the Young Turks who are not journalists are jumping on board the bandwagon of defaming Glenn Greenwald, who is in fact a journalist because they disagree with him politically. And by the way, no fan of Glenn Greenwald over here. If you remember that whole thing with Bill Maher, Sam Cedar, and Ben Affleck, Glenn Greenwald was vehemently on the wrong side of the issue. But let's be honest, this is the guy that published the Snowden leaks. And because of the fact that he published that, which was in fact journalism, 
people are concerned, and he's specifically concerned, about re-entering the United States of America. He's currently in Brazil savaging Bolsonaro because he doesn't like that regime, and Glenn Greenwald is nobody's conservative. However, what they're mad about is that he's angry about the excesses of the left, so therefore they need to paint him as a right-winger because that's what people like the Young Turks do. The online influencer Glenn Greenwald has amplified it to his 1.8 million Twitter followers while calling himself the account's godfather. Look, can I, I gotta interrupt for one second uh, to talk about that. Uh, the account mainly uh, goes after uh, people in the LGBTQ community. And, Private citizens, by the way. Like. And, and, and they, the person behind the account, Chaya Rychik, I wanna be clear about who it is, is Chaya Rychik. Okay. If you didn't think Jank going out of his way to say the name twice and to yell the name the second time was a sign, let me just tell you, Jank is going to lose his mind throughout the course of this video, and this is why we're going to go through this video. Uh, she's a hateful person, a terrible, terrible person who calls people who are gay predators, uh, who says anyone who's allies of the LGBTQ community uh, is mentally ill. Uh, she says that anyone who even mentions uh, someone even being gay, that, that the fact that a gay person exists in a school is grooming, etc. Yeah, right? So needless to say, none of that is true. The thing that the Lives of TikTok account goes after is bad behavior from teachers and people trying to introduce their own political ideology, which is often centered around the LGBTQ double X IIPJJ community, specifically with the examples that come from the teacher's own mouths themselves. She does not say everybody who's an ally of the gays is a mentally ill or anything like that. She's not against people ever saying or existing as a non-straight in school. That is all made up by Jank right there. And Anna is going to continue on with this. The educator who yes. accurately describes their sexual orientation as anything other than straight should immediately be fired. So what's funny about this is that if you're paying attention, if you have an IQ above room temperature, even the Young Turks, the way they're trying to spin this, actually reveals what is bothering them and what is actually going on. You just have to listen past what Anna Kasparian is actually saying. Because she talked about how anybody who has a sexuality beyond straight, who then reveals that sexuality should be fired, which seems like ridiculous, seems like part of that sentence is missing, because what's actually being talked about, what's actually at issue, isn't this person living out and proud separate from the school, it's this person including and incorporating their own personal sexuality into the curriculum, into the classroom, reveal to who is the question. And if you look at everything that's posted by the libs of TikTok account, that is what's at issue here. And they're actually gonna pull up an example, maybe in this video, maybe in the next video, that's going to be proof positive of what I'm telling you here. So take note of that. This is a person who incites uh, violence toward Ordinary people who are doing their jobs, but they have their own political opinions, right? Again, look at the way that Anna Kasparian is framing it. Look at how deceptive she's being. She's saying ordinary people who are doing their own jobs that happen to have their own political opinions. By the way, this is what the left wing goes after people for. The left wing attacks people for having political opinions and they go after their job. What these videos are all about, and again, go look at the Libs of TikTok account yourself, confirm it for yourself, is teachers incorporating their own political opinions using the captive audience that is the classroom as a means of indoctrination of the students. That's what's being revealed and that's why the left hates this account. What I find so fascinating about all of the right-wing outrage over Taylor Lorenz's reporting here is that these are the individuals like, oh yeah, the the left, the left, they, they can't have a conversation. They can't stand opinions that are different from their own. Oh, they're always trying to cancel people. They're always trying to fire people. Yes, 100% true. What you're doing right now is proof of that. You're trying to smear the person behind the Liz of TikTok account. You're highlighting a piece in a coordinated effort that reveals her identity that can easily lead people to finding her family and can lead people to finding her previous employer and all of those additional things. You are doing what you're saying you're not doing right now and that is the problem because that's what you do. Rather than confronting the videos of teachers exposing themselves in their own words, you launch this intimidation campaign against the person who's telling you about what's going on in the classroom. This woman behind libs of TikTok went out of her way to get people fired from their jobs, educators fired from their jobs for simply wanting to 
be open about what their sexual identity is while they're educators, while they're whatever. While they're educators, while they're whatever, right? Again, you have Anna Kasparian stumbling and bumbling and accidentally revealing the truth if you just push past what she's saying a little bit. Nobody cares in current year, in whatever year that we're in at this very moment, what your sexual identity is. Nobody cares about your sexual orientation. Nobody cares what your gender identity is. If you want to be a gaze or you want to be a trans is, nobody is against that on its own. That's just not how it works. And I'm talking about in the general public. Obviously, there's some people that are against it. And I denounce and reject all of you people. Relax, calm down, let live and let live, whatever, whatever, all that's nonsense. It's actual just where super progressive channel you guys all know that for my long track record of being a super progressive channel what people have issues with what people have problems with is that you're not supposed to be out and proud about your sexuality no matter what it is in the classroom you're not supposed to be pushing your agenda in the classroom you're not supposed to use the captive audience that is the classroom to forward your own political goals but the left doesn't believe that the left believes that public schools are are by their very nature a mechanism into indoctrinating students into left-wing ideology. And by the way, this goes far beyond the gays, this goes far beyond the transes, this goes far beyond any of those things specifically. It's on race issues, it's on climate issues, it's on all this other nonsense. We did a story about how Bill de Blasio was going to excuse students' absences if they went out and protested global warming because that's a part of his agenda. So he's breaking the rules and endorsing a specific political ideology. It's all over the place in our public schools that they are indoctrination centers. And what the Young Turks is mad about, what Taylor Lorenz is mad about, what the left is mad about is that this account puts that right in your face in a way that you can't ignore it from the activists posing as teachers own words from their mouths with their faces attached to it themselves. Yeah. And, and, and if Look, she wasn't doing anything wrong, okay? If she was just simply reposting what people are saying on social media, well, then why did she want to be anonymous? Oh, if she was just reposting stuff, then why would she want to be anonymous? Why wouldn't she want her name out there? I mean, Tucker Carlson is the biggest name in cable news. And guess what? Some people showed up, Antifa thugs that are endorsed by the Young Turks, to his house and try to break down his door. He was just doing media. Why would he even want some anonymity? Why would he care if people showed up to his house? I mean, they vandalized his property. Why don't you want to be anonymous? Why Why would you want to hide your identity? I mean, remember Andy No being attacked in the Young Turks? Turks are laughing about that too. Oh no, no, it's fine. You should just reveal your name. It's not like the left has been proven to be violent without consequences and endorsed by people like the Young Turks, like people over at the Washington Post over the past five years, clearly out in public and proudly. No, no, just, just become public. It's not like the whole point of this article was an intimidation campaign. It's not like they're going after her previous employer, her family members, they're revealing her address. No, 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 don't, don't worry about it. You should just, if you're just reposting it no and i'm, I'm gonna imply that you're defaming people beyond using their own words and aggregating all this stuff for the libs of tiktok account but i'm not gonna prove any of that to you i'm gonna go over this article that supposedly proves that but i'm not gonna cite anything that actually shows what i'm saying why would you want to be anonymous though just because we're stoking up a hate mob to go after you personally and now you have to live in hiding why would you not want to have to live in hiding what's wrong with you so glenn who is gay is calling himself the godfather of this account. So he signed on for this. Glenn, how much money is worth it? Jesus Christ, man. You wanna go dance for them, Glenn? Are you ever gonna admit that you've now become a sick right winger that attacks your own community. You gotta love Jank and his Jankisms and how unstable he is when he doesn't like somebody. So Glenn Greenwald, for those of you who don't know, is somebody who doesn't like Jank Uger. He's not on his side. He's not on his team. Jank used to love Glenn Greenwald until Glenn was not into what Jank was selling. So now, of course, just like everybody, Jank attacks him as a right winger. So now he's talking about how Glenn betrayed his own community and how he's a gay man and he shouldn't be doing this, which would lead you to believe one of two options option a glenn greenwald is a gay that hates the other gays for some reason all of a sudden even though he's been pro-gay his whole life out and proud when it was uncool to be out and proud 
Or maybe, possibly, if you actually looked at some of the content being put forward by Libs of TikTok, if you actually watched the videos for yourself, this is actually outrageous and should not be considered as representative behavior of the gay community. And Glenn Greenwald is calling it out because this is beyond the pale. He doesn't believe in the indoctrination in the public schools that was going on. Which side do you think is actually more likely? That Glenn Greenwald is siding against the gays and Jank Uger is the true champion of the gays? Or maybe there's a little bit more going on with this account than TYT and the left is actually implying. He doesn't need to. I mean, everyone knows. Everyone no, sees I, it. No, but the thing is, of course, these idiots in the right wing, the dumbest people alive, so when I point that obvious fact out, that you point out is, come on, Jenk, it's too obvious to even mention, right? They're like, no, Glenn Greenwald's more to the left than you are. <laughs> you morons! I know, Jenk, but they, <laughs> they know he's not. They know he's a useful tool for the right wing. The left knows he's a useful tool for the right wing. The right wing has an interest in presenting him as a leftist to say, see, we're right. The leftist agrees with us. They know what they're doing. That's part of their whole strategy. That Glenn Greenwald is more to the left than the Young Turks. Let's make that clear and public. The reason he goes on places like Tucker Carlson, the reason he's made some friends with the right wing is because there's always been this anti-American streak among the left and among the right. And I'm not saying Tucker Carlson is inherently anti-American. That has led left wingers on the fringe to get along. A lot of people talk about this as if it's a horseshoe theory kind of thing and there is some truth to that this is like when people were posting videos about Dennis Kucinich and Ron Paul getting along about audit the Fed or end the Fed that doesn't mean that Dennis Kucinich is right wing or Ron Paul is left wing it just means that when you go far enough sometimes there's some common ground that's what's happening with Glenn Greenwald Jenk doesn't want to agree on those positions so Jenk just labels them right wing some examples of this phenomenon usually surround issues like freedom of speech and war where people are on the far left like Jimmy Dore or Glenn Greenwald are crazy pro free speech while Cenk Uger is pro censorship and that puts them in line with people like Tucker Carlson and people on the right who are not down with this left wing censorship. Cenk and Anna are pro the censorship much in the same way that the establishment Republican types are pro the censorship but that doesn't make either one of these people move from left to right on the political spectrum just based on that issue. Another example of this is sometimes the left is so anti-war they end up agreeing with the non-interventionist right perfect example ukraine situation that's going on right now glenn jimmy Dore, and a bunch of people on the right are in alignment that this is not our issue but jank uger is closer to the neoconservative position where he wants to provide much more support for ukraine against russia all these issues do not necessarily single issue make you left or right, but the left frames everything as you're more right wing or more left wing. So all these idiots on the left end up having this back and forth, accusing the other person of being fake left wingers based on their positions on these specific issues because they don't believe in disagreement on specific issues. They are not a tolerant group of people. That's why Glenn goes and dances for them for exactly, money. Exactly, yeah. So go ahead, Glenn, defend the fascists. Defend the fascists. The fascists coming after your own community. But oh, hey, you're safe. You're good. You're good. He's got Don't worry. Him. Tucker's always going to protect you. You're one of the good ones, Glenn. I bet they won't come after you at the end, right? You're sick and you should get mental health counseling. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick, Glenn. Oh, you're doing a dance for them for money, Glenn. I'm sure they won't come for you at the end of that. Fascist, fascist, fascist. Of course, Jank losing his mind, bringing up fascism, taking a Nazi reference and putting it in here. That whole thing about them not coming for you at the end is related to that very famous Nazi poem. And considering this is coming from a guy who named his organization after the Young Turks who committed the Armenian Genocide, and he named it that while he was actively denying the Armenian Genocide, and the Young Turks inspired the Nazis to commit their genocide, this has multiple levels of irony within it. Including that whole thing about dancing for the people that are against your group, because of course, Anna Kasparian is an Armenian who is at the Young Turks while Cenk was actively denying the genocide. And now this Chaya uh, woman claims, oh, oh golly gee, I'm just sending out hate all over the world and I'm trying to get everybody fired. Cancel culture? Well, I don't know. 
Golly gee, the right wing would never do cancel culture. Fire them, they're gay. They support gay people, fire them. Fire them, they're gay. They support gay people, fire them. Fire them, they're gay. They support gay people, fire them. Fire them, they're gay. They support gay people, fire them. You idiots, you are cancel culture. You are cancel culture. I can't stand how unintelligent right wingers are. Fire them. They support gay people, fire them. Fire them, fire them, they're gay. Again, Libs of TikTok is not advocating for people to be fired because they're gay. Jank is totally misconstruing that. He thinks if he has rage on his side, that that's a substitute for facts. And the irony of this is that he punctuates his idiocy by saying he can't stand how unintelligent right-wingers are. Totally unhinged, totally nonsensical, and proof positive that Jank is an utter buffoon. Just the dumbest people on the planet. I want her fired because I don't agree with her. I don't like cancel culture. You moron, look at what you just said. Look at what you just said, you're the dumbest person. This isn't about people getting fired because you disagree with them. This is about teachers going far beyond their role in order to do political indoctrination. If the right wing was doing this, which by the way, there are examples of the right wing doing it, you would be against it. The reason I know this is because in those examples, you are in fact against it. You're the one who's being a hypocrite here and you can use whatever stupid voices you want that doesn't hide the fact that you're scared of an account that is revealing what's going on in the public schools. Okay, I just wanna be clear. And why am I so angry? No, these fascists are here. They're, t they're targeting gay people right now. That's exactly what the Nazis did. They're targeting gay people and saying, passing laws against them, saying that they're so evil and bad, no one should even utter the fact that they exist. No, I'm not gonna stand for it. I'm not gonna stand for it. We fight back here and I love that Taylor Lorenz fought back. So if you were unintelligent and you thought I was reaching for the Nazi reference earlier, Jenk comes out right and says it. This is exactly what the Nazis did. I don't know if you guys know that. The Nazis went on the internet.com, found videos of teachers indoctrinating students, and then posted them on the internet.com, and then legislatures passed laws saying, hey, you can't include that in the curriculum. Or actually, most of the time, proposed laws saying, hey, you can't include that in the curriculum. This is basically Nazi Germany, Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Of course, Jenk is attaching this to a person who, by the way, was identified needlessly by Taylor Lorenz as an Orthodox Jew. He's talking about Glenn Greenwald, who is a gay Jew, just trying to emphasize the traitorousness, the libel against them, all that nonsense, and it's insane in every possible way. And by the way, one of the things that I will take note of is Jenk's framing of that last sentence, where he said, I love the way that Taylor Lorenz fought back. I thought Taylor Lorenz was just doing journalism in the public interest. I thought Taylor Lorenz was just doing what every journalist did, but Jenk is characterizing this as fighting back against this person, something that an objective journalist should not be doing. But Jenk knows, everybody knows why this person was targeted. They all know what's going on. They're just trying to pretend like this is somehow up to snuff and don't look into it too much. Also, we're not going to show you the videos, but you know, that's what the Nazis did. The Nazis, they're Nazis. Also, I mean, the libs of TikTok chick, she's libeling people. She's trying to induce rage against people. I'm going to name her. I'm going to link to information where you can find her. And I'm also going to tell you that this is basically exactly what the Nazis did and probably stopping her could stop the Holocaust. I mean, that's implied in what Jenk's saying. As they're saying that the libs of TikTok person by showing the videos that other people post is somehow inciting violence. That's where we are in this country. And look, the fact of the matter is she's being attacked as aggressively as she's being attacked because she's good at her job. And because the right wing, as, as sad as I am to say it, is just not used to anyone fighting back. Again, TYT's own words betray themselves. They're characterizing Taylor Lorenz, who they're saying is definitely a journalist, as fighting back because Taylor Lorenz is, in fact, an activist with a politically motivated ideology. There's a clip that I posted on Twitter from the Philip DeFranco show where Taylor Lorenz says, basically, this person said once that they were at January 6th. Where were you, January 6th? I was in a car dealership looking at a car, and the guy told me that frame damage wasn't actually serious damage. And then I looked up on the TV and I saw January 6th. I saw a Republic fall and I saw a Republic get frame damage. But Taylor Renz says in this clip that I'm going to play for you that this woman is essentially a terrorist 
terrorist because she went to the least violent of all the violent protests that occurred within the six months of January 6th. Of course, notoriously, the Black Lives Matter riots were absolutely everywhere, but whatever, whatever. She went to this one where there was some violence, and by the way, the cases are so ridiculous that a bunch of them are being dismissed or being found not guilty right now. Where were you January 6th? Let me know in the comments. And I also thought that the fact that she claims to be have been inside the barrier at the insurrection last year was was notable um because you know that's you know the people that storm the capital are essentially domestic terrorists yeah that's where taylor lorenzo is coming from if you go to a protest that i disagree with whatever role you may have said you had in that protest you're basically like a terrorist you're you're like literally like seriously like a terrorist because those are like literal terrorisms and again if chaya doesn't think she did anything wrong if all she's doing is reposting what other people are putting up on social media, why does she want to be anonymous? Why is it such a big deal that her identity has been revealed? If she's not doing anything wrong, then why does she want to be anonymous? It's not like the left has led a five year long smear campaign, violence campaign, terror campaign against anybody who's vaguely right. What's even her issue with revealing her identity? Why is she upset that her address was put out on the internet? Why is she upset that her previous employer's address was put out on the internet and telephone number? Why would she be mad that her family's address was put out on the internet i don't understand come on if you're just reposting it it's no big deal i mean the left thinks it's a big deal and they've been prone to violence over the last five years very prominently and publicly and it's been endorsed by people like anna kasparian over at the young turks but if you're just posting the videos and i'm not going to prove that you aren't why are you even mad even and she's not just some you know innocent private citizen who's uh, being targeted in this unfair way this is someone who has essentially served as this you know defamation factory that influences both right-wing media and right-wing legislation. Anna, we know the issue at hand is that she's effective. That's what bothers you. That's why you're upset. That's why you're casting aside all standards. And I want to give you specific examples in just a moment um, as um, Ari Drennan, who works over at Media Matters says, Libs of TikTok is basically acting as a wire service for the broader right wing media, media ecosystem. It's been shaping public policy in a real way and affecting teachers abilities, ability to feel safe in their classrooms. I just wanna point out that Anna Kasparian just quoted Media Matters. Media Matters, who does clip people out of context, who does run smear campaigns against people. That's the whole purpose of the organization. Media Matters, who has a bunch of anonymous funders behind them in their doing so as a valid source of information that should tell you everything that you need to know about that and by the way the quote wasn't even useful it was an opinion thing the teachers don't feel comfortable sharing their sexuality in the class they are scared also a media strategist for the aclu says the role i've seen this account playing is finding new characters for right-wing propaganda it's relying on an, the endless stream of content from tiktok and the internet to cast any individual trans person as a new villain in their story. Again, you have a quote from the ACLU that's just an opinion. It's not evidence of anything. They're not going after the random transes. The whole point is the libs of TikTok. These are the people posting crazy things. They aggregate this information, post it on the account. It was so funny that it blew up and became a big thing. And now the left is angry. And they're quoting the ACLU as if there's some gravitas behind that organization. And it's just a person who happens to be at the ACLU who's like, it's like they're making these people into characters, and I don't know how I feel about that. Wow, great, great reporting. That really emphasizes the Nazi allegations. That really totally sells that this person isn't reposting things, even though both of those were related to reposting the videos, which Anna's denying for some reason. Why don't you just say you're against that if that's what you're actually against, Anna? Because, you know, targeting a group of people who have no power in America right now, who are dealing with the worst forms of harassment already, who have a high suicide rate because of how terrible it is to be a trans person living in the United States. Yeah, let's go after those people. So I'm going to point out, and this needs to be pointed out, it needed to be pointed out years ago, that when you bring up the high suicide rate of the transes as a left winger, as if it's an argument, 
people need to say that's not an argument. You're trying to gain sympathy. You're trying to say don't criticize, don't attack these people, don't attack their political positions, don't attack political positions associated with so-called saving the transes because we don't want to stand up to scrutiny and we're going to pretend that you're responsible for all these suicides, not anything related to pre-existing mental issues. It's all on you disagreeing with us politically and that is meant to be a substitute for an argument. It's nonsensical. It should be called out each and every single time that it's deployed. On top of that, Anna Kasparian was talking about how America, it's so hard to be a trans is in the United States of America. It's not that difficult to be a trans is in the United States of America comparatively. There are places where it's much more difficult. America is one of the freest and openest and most accepting societies that there is. And the idea that particularly it's hard here and that the trans is have no power here is absurd in every possible way. All we hear about is policies and all these things that are geared toward protecting the feelings of the transes in every which way. And when people point out that a bunch of these policies violate the rights of other people, they're called transphobes and they're attacked and they get canceled by scumbags on the left. Let, let's make those people the enemy and our targets. And many of them, again, are educators. They're people who are working class, who aren't trying to cause any problems, but don't want to hide their identity because of right wing bullying and harassment. Again, Again, it's not about making these people hide their identity or anything like that. It's about keeping your personal politics and your personal life out of the classroom. It's so absurd that these people can just repeat these same lies over and over again and not expect any backlash or to be called out. But again, if you're watching the Young Turks unironically, you are probably somebody who would buy into this. And again, Libs of TikTok does that and only that. That's the only point for that account. Um, so uh, I want to go to more details about who uh, Chaya is. So I'm going to skip over the part where the Young Turks talk about the previous place of employment for this person and how you could actually find the cell phone number of this person and all that nonsense based on the fact that they changed the name of their Twitter account rather than redoing their Twitter account outright, which of course, in hindsight, you should have done. But the person behind Lives of TikTok had no idea that they'd become a national phenomenon when setting up the account. So we're getting into the personal information so that the Young Turks can and put that out there so that people connected to the lives of TikTok owner and her herself can be harassed by people in TYT's audience. I mean, honestly, ask yourself, why is it important to identify this person's religion? Why is it important to identify the borough that they worked and lived in? and the industry that they worked in. Why is that all there? And why is it important to link to where this information came from, which of course reveals her previous employer? Why is it important to acknowledge that her cell phone was connected to some of these accounts if you wanted to go looking for it? All of this is done for intimidation purposes. And of course, Anna is highlighting this information and pretending she's not doing what she's doing. So if you wanna be anonymous, Maybe think a little ahead of what you're doing, right? Yeah. So this is easily accessible information. Taylor Lorenz was able to access it and she reported on it. Yeah, random person who started a random Twitter account, then changed the name and then found a crazy success. Why didn't you cover all your footsteps earlier? Why is this information, which by the way, is really easily accessible. You out there can go find this easily accessible information. In fact, Taylor Lorenz didn't even do any of the work to find this. Random people on the internet found it. She just amplified it to the maximum so if you go find that guy you could definitely find this easily accessible information and taylor wren's such a good person so stunning so brave such a good journalismer she ended up fighting back against this evil person and found all this information and then you could find it by the way she left you enough clues so you could go find it and harass her especially if you're a dedicated violent thug psychopath by the way did we mention that this person's like a nazi and if you go find them maybe you'll stop the holocaust under her first handle uh shia and the, all those numbers, she minimized COVID, cast doubt on the election results, and promoted a dubious story about a child sex trafficking ring. Of course she did, because she, she's did. a liar and a conspiracy theorist, and that's why the right wing loves her. On November 23rd of 2020, uh, Rachik changed handles, this time going by Shia Ray and identifying herself publicly as a real estate investor in Brooklyn. She began doubling down on election fraud conspiracies using QAnon related language. Early that December, she joked about launching a clothing line titled, Voter Fraud is Real. So the Young Turks think that they're slick because they're like, look, we're quoting from the article 
and we're doing what people aren't doing, which is paying attention to the story. But again, pay attention to the story. She downplayed COVID. This horrible person that I'm attacking because I disagreed with me politically, let me highlight the things that she disagrees with me politically. She had doubts about the election in November when a bunch of the votes were coming in and we didn't know where it was going to go. And a lot of people thought it was sketch. What, what are we even going to do? And then promoted this weird story about a dubious child sex trafficking ring. I don't even know what this means. Maybe she retweeted a post which has happened again private citizen not expected to vet all this stuff and of course a lot of people get very conspiratorial about all these different rings that are going on unlike the Jeffrey Epstein ring which was totally on the up and up and nobody should pay attention to that because I'm sure Jeffrey Epstein totally nothing suspicious about anything related to his death uh, so that's who she is you get a little sense of uh, what she likes to do she was there during the Capitol riots on January 6 because of course she was so we get the January 6 reference we already covered that earlier let's move on a little bit further in the video now um, she decided to pivot to libs of TikTok on April 19th, 2021. And it really started to blow up after Joe Rogan drew attention to it on his show. So just four months after getting started, Libs of TikTok got a big break. Joe Rogan started promoting the account of to millions did. of listeners of his hit podcast. Because he's a meathead who hates uh, trans people. He mentioned it several times on his show in August and then again in late September. Libs of TikTok is one of the greatest effing accounts of all time, he said. With his seal of approval, Rachix following skyrocketed. Yeah, Joe Rogan talked about the account because because it was hilarious and it was going viral. But of course, Jenks like, he's a meathead who hates trans people. What is this based on? Joe Rogan talks consistently about how he supports the transes. He's basically a leftist on the transes, except when it comes to the issues of transes in sports. And again, she loves to brag about getting educators fired. So here's an example, screenshot from the account. Any teacher who utters the words, I came out to my students, should be fired on the spot. So this is great for a number of reasons. Anna Kasparian says that Libs of TikTok brags about the people that she got fired from the schools. And she says she's gonna show you an example of it. She pulls up a screenshot and what does it say? It says teachers who say I came out to my students should be fired on the spot. So this isn't bragging, this is actually taking a position. And what is wrong with this position? It's the idea that, hey, you shouldn't be introducing your sexuality into the classroom. The idea that coming out to your students should be a part of your own personal gay journey or whatever doesn't make any sense you come out to members of your family your friends and all that that's all part of it nobody has any issue with that but you don't use the captive audience that is the classroom to reveal intimate personal details about your life as a teacher this should be obvious and joe rogan and bill maher cancel culture enthusiasts boy they love to fight against cancel culture they're like, oh, it's my favorite account, the one that gets people fired for being gay. I mean, we hate gay people. Of course, you should fire them for being gay or even talking about people that are gay or acknowledging anyone who's gay. Fire them, fire them, fire them. That's what Rogan and Bill Maher say. Oh, but no, no, it's not about them. Again, I will put the screenshot up on screen. Are they talking about firing somebody because they're gay? Or are they talking about firing somebody for their behavior in the classroom that they believe is inappropriate? Also, Jenk is putting this one screenshot, which he can't even read accurately, by the way, neither can Anna, and saying that Bill Maher and Joe Rogan endorse it because Bill Maher and Joe Rogan talk about how the left overall is largely in favor of censoring speech they disagree with. Specifically, people like Jenk Uger. He's going into this unhinged meltdown during the course of this, talking about how Rogan and Jenk hate the gays, which is absurd in every possible way. You're just lying, Jenk, and you're pretending like we all can't see you lying right in front of our faces. See, that's the thing with right wingers, right? If it affects them, then it's important. Oh, I don't, want, I don't want to be canceled for, uh, you know, uh, calling someone the n-word on purpose. Uh, I don't want to be canceled for saying awful, hideous, racist things, right? Now, Jenk is saying, I don't want to be fired, and he reaches for an example for calling somebody the n-word on purpose. This might be in a reference to Joe Rogan saying the n-word a bunch of times, which was cut together in a compilation in order to smear Joe Rogan, which is interesting because people have also cut together a compilation of Jenk and Anna saying it more than twice as many times on their show. But sure, whatever, no standard. 
standards, but double standards. I got that. And now he's talking about, yo, you're just being horribly racist or whatever, whatever. Jank, you're the racist. Half the videos on your network are just blatant anti-white attacks, and you don't even try to hide your hatred for these people. But you, I, I want you fired immediately because I, I, I don't like that you're gay. Jank, nobody in this story is advocating for the firing of anybody based solely on the fact that they're gay. Again, show me the evidence of that beyond what you're just making up and speculating, and I will adjust my position. I actually respond to evidence, and I don't skew and morph tweets in my brain that don't say what I'm claiming in order to have them fit my narrative and then randomly go off on tangents against Joe Rogan and Bill Maher because you were watching Joe Rogan and Bill Maher talk recently and what they said about the left really bothered you because you can't get yourself invited back on Joe Rogan. Imagine if there was an anonymous left-wing account on Twitter that went around accusing, forget private citizens, prominent right-wingers as pedophiles, rapists, why not? How would they feel? Would they want to know the identity of the person who's defaming them? Well, some of them, some of them actually are pedophiles and stuff like that. I love this part of the story. It's so amazing. Anna Kasparian's talking about how lives of TikTok is outrageous because she's accusing all these people of being pedophiles and all this stuff. How would you like it if there was a left-wing account that was doing this anonymously? How would you like that if that was happening? Well, actually, a bunch of the right-wing people are actually those things. I don't know if you know that. Again, just undercutting all principle, all logic, all reason from herself as she's talking. She can't help herself. That's how demented these people are. Let me give you more. So again, she loved to brag about getting educators fired. Taylor Lorenz offers a specific example. Tyler Rin, a former English teacher in Oklahoma, posted a video telling LGBTQ kids shunned by their parents that Rin was proud of them and loved them. It was featured on libs of TikTok last week. Since being featured on the page, he's been barraged with harassment and death threats. You know, this video of this person that we're talking about is actually available. You could watch it. What do you want to bet that the guy in the video didn't just say that he's proud of his LGBTQ students? What do you want to say that it went a little further beyond that? And that is what generated the outrage. Because think about it yourself. If some teacher posted on TikTok that he was proud of his students for coming out as gays, again, just on his TikTok account, would that bother you? Would that be an issue for you? Why don't we play the video and you can compare it to Taylor Lorenz's characterization and the Young Turks regurgitation and we'll see if it's actually accurately described. A former English teacher in Oklahoma posted a video telling LGBTQ kids shunned by their parents that Rin was proud of them. Hey, if your parents don't love and accept you for who you are this Christmas, fuck them. I'm your parents now. I'm proud of you. Drink some water. I love you. Bye. So the real issue was this person posting on Twitter that he presumes the role of parents. He would take the role of parents in the class. Forget about your parents. He's going to be your parents. That was what was at issue. They also cut off the swearing, all that stuff, which, by the way, I'm not bothered by the swearing. Again, this was posted on social media. But it's the idea, the presumption that these teachers can take the role of the parents. That is the issue at hand. That's one of the big issues at hand with the Florida bill that the left labels the don't say gay bill. But the Young Turks cuts that out. They don't play the video for you. They just say, oh, he said he was proud of his students and the evil racist right wing fascist Nazis just went after him when all he said he was proud, even though I played the video for you because unlike the Young Turks, unlike Taylor Lorenz, I'm not going to lie to you. Well, well, I thought you guys were concerned about outing people. Well, OK, you amplified uh, that video by Rin and then uh, promoted your lunatic fascist followers to send him death threats. What happened to free speech? What happened to not outing people? Well, yeah, okay, he uh, did the original video. And look at how hateful they are. Look at what terrible people they are. And if you're gonna be like, oh, Jank, don't call her hateful just because she despises gay people and thinks that if you're a gay student, you shouldn't be comforted by your teacher. You should be yelled at, derided, and, and the teacher should make you feel as bad as the parents do, and, and maybe until you commit suicide. Okay, no, I don't agree. I think a person who does that is 
terrible. I don't want to be polite to Nazis. Yes, this was all said by the Lives of TikTok account. This was all put forward by the Lives of TikTok account. It's definitely 100% what happened. It's definitely 100% true. Pay no mind to anything. This is what went down. This is what they were saying. Jenk is totally not mischaracterizing it. Jenk is now saying that the Lives of TikTok account, just to be clear, is pro the suicide of children, and now he's taking a moral stand against it. He's saying, I don't agree that the kids should commit suicide. Brave, stunning, beautiful beautiful of you to say Jake we are so proud of you wow 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 I mean we're talking about people who have defended Alex Jones incessantly after he lied about the parents of children who were killed during the mass uh, the uh, Newtown massacre the Sandy Hook mass shooting he got his followers to harass and literally send death threats to the Posner family who lost their son in that massacre. So Alex Jones should not have spread conspiracy theories about the whole thing related to Sandy Hook. But to be clear, he was not sending his followers after these people. That did not happen. Some of his crazy followers went after people. Also, Alex was not the biggest pusher of this conspiracy theory, although Alex has a huge megaphone, so it does have consequences. People are defending Alex Jones because the way that they're targeting his organization can be used to limit the First Amendment and other media organizations. If this were a left-wing person that was blatantly lying then the left would side with them see how many times they covered Rachel Maddow using the same defense as Alex Jones to get out of her labeling a news station she didn't like as literal Russian disinformation paid by the Kremlin okay I don't hear any of these right-wingers going after what Alex Jones did because they love it they love the they, they love the harassment when they're doing it of they course. love the threats when they're doing it they love the defamation when they're doing it okay uh, honestly, because for them that's power that's how they flex their power actually plenty of people did go after Alex Jones I mean he spread conspiracy theories and those conspiracy theories did have consequences for the family of the victims of a kid that was killed I would say most people on the right are not fans of Alex Jones. In fact, what people typically defend Alex Jones over has nothing to do with that. They defend him over the coordinated banning of his accounts because that was used as an excuse to get rid of him. And when someone dares to fight back, oh, instead of focusing on the story, what do they want to focus on? Oh, Taylor Lorenz bad. Taylor Lorenz mean. Let's go after Taylor Lorenz. We don't like it. We, we're used to leftists not fighting us effectively. Yes, yes, Anna, people are pointing out the hypocrisy of Taylor Lorenz, who about a week ago was crying about how any information revealed to the public can be used against you as she, in a broad way, revealed all this information to public, is doing a media tour, and people like you are smearing the person that she dug up this information on as an evil Nazi who's ruining the country, and you probably should do something about it. They're used to Democrats who are cowards, right? And the minute that any of these goons, this Gestapo, says boo to an establishment Democrat, they're like, oh, and the Democrat runs away. Okay, but when we don't run away, Jank, you can't run away. Taylor Lorenz doesn't run away, and we actually fight back with facts. Oh man, all of a sudden they catch feelings. But we're making a mistake. We keep thinking that they have any degree of logic. They don't. They, they, they're just very simple people filled with hate. So they go, me do something that is good. You do same exact thing that is bad. And we think, well, that's hypocritical, isn't it? That's irrational. But they don't even understand what logic is. They don't understand what rational is. So they think, again, more voices, more irrational behavior. But let's see Jenk throw out a steel man. Let's see Jenk frame the right wing position as fair with the example that he's going to deliver to you. So they think, Oh, if you want to get me fired because I hate black people and I'm a cop and I beat up black people all the time and my as part of my job, yeah. that's cancel culture. But if I get you fired for telling a kid, poor kid, hey, you know, it's going to be okay, hang in there. Well, of course I should get you fired. That's not cancel culture because I hate you. Yeah, that's the example. The right wing says that cancel culture is when you get a racist cop fired who hates black people and beats up black people every day. That's what the right is against. But they're in favor of somebody who is a teacher saying, hey, kid, it's going to be OK being fired because they hate the gays. That That's totally a representative example of what's going on. That's definitely an A plus exactly one to one comparison of the right wing and the left wing position. 
and totally not a straw man by Cenk Uger over at the Young Turks. <laughs> they don't care. They're just so unintelligent. It's impossible to talk to them. And we live with them. I don't know what to do with them. They're so unintelligent. I don't know what to do with them. I mean, I called them Nazis a bunch of times, and I said what they're doing is basically like the first step of the Holocaust. I'm not sure what to do with them. And we live with them. They're so unintelligent. What are we going to do? I mean, let me demonize them a little more. This Chaya Rychik lady now moved to West Hollywood. Okay. West Hollywood of West places. Hollywood, who is, that's the epicenter. Why, why'd you move to West Hollywood? Yeah, I mean, what? it's known for a large population of LGBTQ people. Why'd why you move would there? you live there? Why'd you move there? If you hate them so much, why'd you, why don't you get the hell out uh, of that community? You're because not, you're not welcome. Not welcome. Okay, you're the Gestapo that is trying to intimidate that community. You're not welcome. And then the Young Turks bring up where she moved into, and they start yelling, get the hell out of the community. Why would you move there? Now, of course, this would lead me to believe that maybe this person doesn't have that big of an issue with the gays in general. Maybe the rent or whatever was affordable. But Jenk and Anna just reporting that she moved there and telling her to get the hell out of the community and she's not welcome there. Again, while referencing an article, which can help you find out what her address is so that you can go do something and maybe force her out of the neighborhood. That's what Jenk and the Young Turks are all about. And look at the anger. Look at the vitriol. He's calling her a Nazi. He says, you're not welcome here. You're the Gestapo and you live in West. Hollywood, let me point out where you live. You're not welcome here. Get out of the community because I'm Jenk Uger and I'm totally not in favor of violence or anything like that. Don't worry. I'm, I'm a nice guy. She just believes the wrong thing and she needs to get out of that neighborhood. West Hollywood, West Hollywood, why did you move there? By the way, Taylor Lorenz's piece, go look at it. Go look at it. You can find out her address from the internet and then you could tell her that she's not welcome in that neighborhood by force. I mean, not by force. Uh, but don't do that. Now, I want to be very clear. So there's an important part of this where they say, oh, she, they, she got doxxed. No, again, I know right wingers, they don't care about facts. But for the rest of you, I have to clarify. Doxing is when you say this is their address, okay? And you should go do, do something about it. Doxing is not, this is the human being saying that, okay? So we're, you know who we are, you know our names, you know our faces. That doesn't mean you have a right to come to our homes, right? Uh, especially if you're rando that has nothing to do with anything. That doesn't mean you, you could publish our home address and you could uh, threaten us, etc. Uh, let me be clear, after talking about all the hypocrisy related to this story, it doesn't mean that you could do this to us. You can't come to our homes, you can't confront us, you you can't do that. Uh, but just don't, don't show up to people's homes. The West Hollywood, not welcome there, she's a Nazi, she's going after the gays. West Hollywood, uh, but like also here's the link to where you can find out where she lives. But like, don't come to our houses because we don't want to be lived up to the same standards as other people. West Hollywood, that's where the Nazi chick lives. West Hollywood, she moved there, and by the way, you can find out who she is and all that from let me let me say her name again and by the way it doesn't matter if you're left wing or right wing they, apparently i don't know if tim pool is another liar but if he's telling the truth and i don't know it, i i assume that he actually is telling the truth you should not assume that i maybe i'm wrong but it, but he says he's getting swatted uh seven eight times that's an outrage that's unacceptable i don't care who's doing it it's unacceptable any way you look at it so another thing that the left does and the Young Turks are really good at is casting doubt on things that are provably true. Whether or not Tim Pool got swatted is not up for debate. You can watch his live show when the police come in the room. They're actually being caught on the camera. But Jenks like, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't happen. If it did happen, I'm probably saying it didn't happen, then that's actually bad. And Anna's like, no, it definitely didn't happen. You shouldn't believe Tim Pool. Don't believe your lying eyes. I mean, it's all on video. You can see it for yourself. If you contact the police department in question, they do say that they responded to an incident at this location multiple different times but no Tim Pool's probably making it up he probably hired a bunch of cops to interrupt his show in the middle of the show got the guests and everybody who lives at that house by the way I've done the show a lot of people live at that house to coordinate in their lie just so he could say wow 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 this totally happened and just for attention or whatever seven different times even though nobody's really giving it that much attention beyond when they initially report the first story Nope, nope, didn't happen. No way, no well. It's not real. Don't worry about it. I mean, Anna says it's fake, so don't believe Tim Pool. But if it did happen, theoretically and hypothetically, then, um, yeah, Jenk, I guess you would be against it. But just saying who someone is is not doxing them. That's just not true. So I'm, I got uh, an anonymous person during uh, my campaign run uh, who just started putting out out of context videos. And she's like, nope. I demand not to be known. Well, she's an established Democratic establishment hack. 
And Jake Tapper and all the other idiots in the media were like, oh, I don't care who she is. I'm not going to do any journalism. Let's just quote her. <laughs> right? No, you don't get to be anonymous if you're in the public square. Uh, so in this case, Taylor Lorenz did, did go to her house to do reporting that does, if you're not a reporter, don't pretend that you are, okay? Taylor's an actual reporter and she had no idea. She, by the way, the main story that she broke is that it turns out, yes, it's definitely her. So here you have Jenks saying, okay, well, she did go to the house, but if you're not a real journalist, meaning somebody on the left, don't do the same thing. Don't do it to me. I had this anonymous person going after me. I didn't like that, blah, blah, blah. The media didn't unmask this person. I, I'm not even gonna question why they went out of their way to do this when they wouldn't do that for the person attacking me. Whatever, I'm Jenk Uecker, it's totally fine. Uh, yeah, so she went to the house, but she was a real reporter, worked for a real newspaper. You can't do that. Rules for thee, but not for me. If you're a right-wing journalist, don't show up to Jenk's house because Jenk won't like that and that won't count because double X Y Y and that person is totally not a real reporter because I don't agree with them if I agree with your politics if I agree with who you're going after that makes you a real reporter if you work for a real newspaper that makes you a reporter but if you're a Fox News guy if you work for the Wall Street Journal if you work for the Washington Examiner and you show up at my house I'm not going to tolerate it and you're that's doxing see how quickly Jenk calls that doxing Anyway, that's really all I have for you guys today in terms of this video. We will touch upon this further because the Young Turks other video is just as crazy, if not more crazy. But for now, we're going to let it go. If you like this video, you can show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social medias. Support me via the support links in the description box. This has been me talking about the Young Turks losing their minds. Till next time.